Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about a project that I did with a hospital in rural Utah that needed to expand the capacity and throughput of their emergency department, because if they didn't, they were going to have to expand and build a new emergency department to handle the demand in their area. So we helped them increase their throughput. We used the Lean Six Sigma principles. We used the DMAIC process, and I'm going to show you how we did that right now. Okay, so let's say you're the CEO of a hospital and you have so much demand because your community is growing that you're thinking, man, I've got to build a new hospital or a new wing or add, you know, 20 more beds or something like that because we just can't handle the demand. So the CEO approached me and said, hey, you know, we really need help with this. Can you come help us out? And I said, sure, absolutely. Let's dig into it. So we started the reduction of LOS, length of stay in the hospital project and specifically in the emergency department. To do this project, we're following the DMAIC process. Now you can use PDCA for Lean or DMAIC for Six Sigma. It doesn't really matter as long as you have a structured approach to solving your problem. I really like the DMAIC process because it seems to make sense when I teach it to people, they can kind of follow it. So we're gonna use the DMAIC process for this project. All right, so here's the team over at Mount West Medical Center. They're thinking to themselves, man, we have got to expand. Our community is growing. What are we gonna do? It's gonna be really expensive. Maybe we could push that can down the road a little bit if we could get a little bit better at taking care of our patients. And they were right, okay? Even though the doctors and the nurses were pushing the CEO pretty hard saying, hey, you know, we just can't, we can't handle the volume. We need, you know, five more beds, 10 more beds in our ED. It's like, hey, uh, you know, we've got to make this happen. The CEO had the insight to say, you know, let's see if we can be more efficient first before we go and expand. It may be inevitable with how fast that community is growing, but, you know, let's see if we can at least try the efficiency route first. So we gathered some data. This is in the measure phase now. This was previously, this was the defining the problem, right? The defined phase of the DMAIC. The measure phase of the DMAIC was all about mapping the process and getting the data. So what is the data telling us? Well, okay, 245 minutes. That's our average length of stay. Hmm, that seems excessive, right? What if we could get that down to 120 minutes, which is two hours? You know, significantly drop the length of stay. What would happen? Well, according to Little's Law, Little's Law would say we can handle twice as many patients if we go twice as fast with our throughput. We get the patients through the building twice as fast. Now, something to remember here, you, you don't want to ever sacrifice quality for throughput. In fact, a lot of the times, improving your quality will actually improve your throughput because you're not having rework or, you know, defects. In this case, patients being the main, uh, you know, product that you're serving um, are the people. And if you have a problem or you do something wrong, you know, maybe you do their blood work wrong or you don't do a, a good draw or, you know, radiology is backed up, you don't get them to radiology on time, right? All those things are essentially defects that slow down your process. So if you sacrifice quality, your throughput oftentimes uh, follows. So we need to do both. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's take a look at Little's Law here. Little's Law is a formula for calculating how much inventory you need based on cycle time or what your cycle time needs to be based on your demand. So there's three main variables. The first variable is our patient wait time. How long are people uh, waiting? It's going to equal the number of patients in the emergency department times the cycle time per patient. So if it takes us 240 minutes for to process a patient through the emergency department, and we've got 10 people in the emergency department, you multiply those two numbers together, and wow, that's how long people are going to be waiting. We know in, in this current process, if we have 24 hours in a day and we have five beds, Let's, let's do a capacity analysis. That's 120 available hours per day, 7,200 available minutes. That's 150 average minutes per patient. Now, obviously we're not there yet. We wanted to get there, but that would mean our max capacity would be about 48 uh, patients per day. And that's, you know, that's great, except if your demand is 100 patients per day, then you're in trouble, right? Now, now you need to find a more bed somehow. So we looked at the length of stay and we put it inside of a CPK chart. A CPK chart is just a process capability chart where you put two uh, goal posts on the left side and the right side, just like you're kicking a field goal in American football. And you're seeing, you know, how often do we fit between those goal posts? So you can see from our data here, um, it looks like about 50% or more are outside of spec. And actually, if you look down here on the right, it says percent defects, a little hard to see there. It's 45.8%. So 45.8% of our um, patients take longer than the desired time, which is uh, right here, 150 minutes. That's what we were shooting for. Just if we can get a patient through 150 minutes or less, we're doing really well. So that needs, means our average needs to be actually better than that, closer to like 100, 120 minutes. And that way, with the variation in the process, we can get a majority of our patients through in 150 minutes. A five-star hospital can get patients through in 120 minutes. 
a really good hospital can do that. So that's what we're aspiring to. Now, 46% of our patients are taking longer than 150 minutes. We have to find out the root cause. What is the reason for this? So as you're doing the analyze phase of the DMAIC process, you're looking for the root cause of whatever your problem is. In this case, we looked at the root cause of why a patient takes over 120 minutes. Anytime somebody took longer than that, we would track it. Number one reason, lab results. Number two reason, imaging pickup. Number three, waiting for orders. That's orders from the doc. Number uh, four, doc is late to see the patient. Number five, admitting. So if you look at those first five areas, they uh, constitute about 65% of our problem, right? If we want to get rid of 80% of the problem, we got to move down to timely draws and imaging results getting back. And um, that gets us down to the 80% level. So as you can see, it's not a silver bullet and it rarely is, right? Uh, you, you really have just one problem that you're like, aha, if we just fix that one thing, uh, everything's going to get better. It, it it almost never works out that way. So in the Pareto, you get a kind of a pecking order, a priority list of all the things you need to work on, and you just start tackling them one at a time. And as you do that, you get better and better. And how much better? Well, if we fix the lab result problem, 20% of our patients that are over 120 minutes will now be under 120 minutes. So the lab results getting um, picked up and dropped off on time, that's uh, that's brilliant. That's a big part. If we fix the imaging uh, pickup problem, that's uh, taking us all the way to 35% of our total uh, problem or total patients that are past 120 minutes. So just with those first two, we get a 35% improvement in our process. So that is awesome. That That's really good. So that's what we're going to go tackle. So here's some of the team at Mount West Medical Center. They're excited about process improvement. They're always so willing to just try new things. And that's exactly what we needed to do. We needed to go try new things. So we kicked off a series of small Kaizen's or continuous improvement projects to try to tackle those uh, problems that we identified on the Pareto. So number one, improving the patient pickup from the emergency department to radiology. So here's what would happen. The doctors would um, say, hey, yeah, patient's ready for pickup. Or actually it was probably the nurses. The nurses would say that. And they'd, they'd call or they'd text and say, hey, come pick up the patient. And then, you know, radiology would maybe be a little bit late because they were busy. And so they'd be late to come pick up the patient and that would add to the clock. Or radiology would be on time and come get the patient right away. And when they go to get the patient, they're in the middle of a blood draw or they're in the middle of, you know, the doctor doing another analysis or something else is happening, right? The patient's being moved or they have to use the restroom or something like that, right? And so radiology is like, oh, they're not really ready. They said they were ready, but they're not. So then they would go back and uh, start doing other stuff. And then the emergency department would get frustrated, like, where's radiology? They didn't even know they came to get the patient, much less the fact that they came, the patient wasn't ready, and they went back. So just miscommunication, right? There was no clear handoff. Sometimes the nurses and the docs in the emergency department would call radiology when the patient wasn't really ready. Um, sometimes radiology wouldn't come on time. So we, had, we addressed that with... Um, making some changes to the process. So first we made the process very visible. So boom, it pops up on the screen in radiology when the patient is ready, right? We can follow up with a text or phone call, but it pops up on the screen when it's ready. And we ended the bad behavior of the docs and nurses saying the patient was ready when they really weren't because they were just hoping to get radiology down there a little bit faster. So they were preemptively notifying them. We want to make sure the patient was actually ready. So now that the patient is actually ready, when radiology comes, they only come once, grab the patient, take them back. It's very visible. And when they and they grab the patient, they take him back, they're handshaking with the nurse so that the nurse actually is the one now updating the screen in the EMS system that's actually tracking that the patient has moved so that we get a clear signal that the pickup has happened. So that improved communication is what helped us change the process for the handoff from the emergency department down to radiology. Now, the next thing we need to fix was the pickup pick up and drop off of the blood draws. So when you're drawing blood and you're taking it back to the lab, again, you have the same communication problem, right? Is the blood draw ready? If the blood draw is ready, how long has it been sitting there waiting for someone to pick it up? Or should we go deliver it to the lab, right? Who's responsible for that handoff? Is it whoever's not busy? Because that's kind of what it was before. It's like whoever wasn't busy would go and, you know, deliver it or come pick it up and vice versa. And then when something went wrong, of course, there's finger pointing of, you know, whose job it was and who didn't do their job. So, the best way to fix a confusing process with lots of variation is to clearly define what the process should be and then follow that. So we established a process where the blood would be picked up in the same location and there would be a notification sent to the lab immediately so that we could start the clock ticking to know how long it took for the blood to be picked up, then for the blood to be processed, and then for the blood to be returned. And since we want to treat the emergency department staff as our you know, surgeon mentality, meaning 
they never have to leave to go do other stuff because they're the most important people on the staff. They're taking care of the patient. So instead of having the nurses and docs have to run the, the blood down to the lab, we make the lab come and get it because we need to keep our doctors on the floor uh, where they're helping people. So clear roles and responsibilities. We made the process visual. We had an automatic uh, timer in our system would actually uh, count when the blood would, had been made ready for pickup. And that just simplifying that process, making it more visual was the key to getting our times down, you know, and cutting 10, 20, 30 minutes off of a lab time, which was significant. Improvement number three, we have to improve the visibility of the door to dock time, right? So how soon is the doctor getting to the patient and how soon is the doc getting to a decision, right? So those are two key metrics that we're tracking here. So we're looking at by different doctors, which ones are taking the most time uh, with patients from arrival to departure. And, you know, this is really painful, right? Anytime you post a metric that has people's names on it, it can cause some controversy to say the least, right? But if you, you know, if you approach it with the mindset of, hey, we're not out to like criticize anyone. Um, we just want to learn from the best, right? So who, which doctors are the fastest at getting to their patients and what is it about their routine that they're doing that allows them to get to their patients faster? Which doctors are getting to a decision more quickly? They get their blood work, they get their tests back on time, they're able to make a decision quickly. How are they doing that? How do we get all of the doctors in the facility to have the same response time or improve their response times to be more like the highest performing doctors? And the great thing about doctors is at first they're really uh, frustrated sometimes uh, or upset because they don't want to be told what to do, right? They're kind of the boss and they want to say, you know, I do my job the way I want to do it. But once they see the data and they find out there's, uh, you know, a group of other doctors that are actually doing their same job and maybe doing it a little bit faster, a little bit easier, um, they usually, uh, be, being very logical people, they tend to think, okay, yeah, how, how can I be more like that person? And you don't even have to necessarily even make improvements with them. They'll, they'll just go and make the improvements themselves. Um, uh, I know this from working with a lot of hospitals. My mother is also a doctor or was before she retired. And it's, it's very much a cultural thing that you have to pay attention to when you're making changes in a hospital. You know, there's a dynamic there with, um, you know, the doctors, the nurses, the more experienced people, the new staff. And sometimes, you know, some people are willing to make changes and some people aren't. So change management is a really big part of continuous improvement and lean and six Sigma. So, um, if you haven't go watch one of the change management modules that we have in our lean six Sigma green belt training, you can always, uh, uh sign up for that course at lean six Sigma toolbox.com and learn more about how to do the, the soft side people skills, uh, portion of continuous improvement. So in addition, we have these nice little screens here, uh, like this one that show you where the patient's at, how long, uh, they've been in certain stations, which doctors are taking care of them. And those screens are incredibly helpful at making it visible so people can see how we're performing. And we know for winning or losing in real time, rather than, you know, looking at a report a week or two weeks later. Improvement number four, simplify the patient admission process. So traditionally in a hospital, you walk in to the waiting room, you talk to the, the nurse at the front of the window or wherever the admitting is, and you have to give them a bunch of information before they go back, unless you're, you know, bleeding and have an obvious, you know, something really terrible happening. And, and then they wheel you back right away. But a lot of times they're trying to gather all your information first. Well, that's actually a waste. That's actually a delay because there's a lot of things we can get done before we have all of your information. And not only that, but filling out the information should be super simple, right? It shouldn't be multiple forms with that you have to fill out your address and your name on every single form. It's just so much redundancy there a lot of times in hospitals and, and clinics. And, you know, anytime you go to a doctor's office, you fill out, feel like, feels like you're filling out the same information 10 times, right? So uh, we've made great strides in the last five years in uh, healthcare in simplifying these forms, um, but there's still room to improve. And so that was one of the things we did. This project was several years ago and we simplified the form to make it easier to fill out. And then we said, you know what, if the patient's going to be going back to the emergency department anyway, and we have a bed available, let's walk them back and let's start getting the nurses involved, checking on them while we're getting their information. And that's just going to cut, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes out of the process. And it's also going to give the patient a better experience because now they're actually able to be taken care of before we have everything. Um, you know, the argument used to be, well, we don't know for, you know, what we're going to do with them. We really need their information. We need their insurance. Blah, blah, blah. Well, the reality is we're in the emergency department. We're never turning anyone away you know, we're going to serve them and help them either way. So let's get started on the value added part of the process and we'll take care of the non-value add or the required waste, which is the paperwork while we're doing the value added part and overlap those together. So that worked really well. Um, Reduce the complexity of the forms by 45%. And uh, again, we saved a bunch of time in the admitting side of things. So if you go back to our Pareto here, 
We worked on uh, the admitting process, this one right here. We worked up on the uh, lab results, going back and forth, uh, imaging pickup, waiting for orders, and doc late to see the patients. Um, all of these things uh, we were, were things that we tackled, and the results were awesome. We ended up reducing the length of stay from what was about 245 minutes down to 80, 185 minutes. And then we reduced it from 185 minutes down to 150 minutes. And then we continued working on the processes until we got it down to about 130 minutes. And we, uh, on some weeks, we were actually under 120 minutes. So we're shifting our average over, right? The average performance is getting better and better. The variability in the performance uh, was something that was a little bit more difficult to control, but our average performance was getting better. So because of this, because we cut about, you know, a third to a half of our time out of our process, depending on the week, the hospital didn't have to expand, right? They've been operating with the same number of beds that they had five years ago to this day. And the community has grown by like 60%. So they're able to service that many more people with the same staffing, the same number of beds, and not have to spend the money on an expansion. Not yet, right? They're probably going to have to eventually, but but not yet. And thanks to the changes that the emergency department continues to make in the spirit of true continuous improvement. So as with any good Lean Six Sigma project, you should always show data to show your results. And that's what this chart is. So here's our control chart before, you know, where we were over, you know, up around 150, 160 minutes until we started dropping down here. And we saw that our average had actually improved and our process variation was getting less. And then if you continue to track this out, we dropped it again and again. So, you know, about every month we would track our progress and sum it up. And that's what this chart shows is just the, the steady Kaizen mentality, continuously improving, getting better and better and better every week, every month. What does that mean to the hospital in terms of dollars and improvement? Well, if our capacity at 150 minutes is 48, at 110 minutes, which is what we eventually got ourselves down to, that's a 36% improvement, which means we go from 48 to 65 patients per day. What does that mean in terms of dollars? Well, if you average about $500 of revenue or income, top line revenue for a patient, that's an improvement of about $3 million per year for the hospital, just an additional revenue without having any additional costs. So that's pretty significant, right? Now, the other thing that you don't often think about when you do a continuous improvement project, though, is just the state of the employees. So you might think, well, man, they're, they're having to do, you know, that, that many more patients. That's, that's going to be a lot more stressful. Well, actually, it's not. As we made improvements in the emergency department, what we found was the, both the manager, Scott, and his team were happier. Why? Because there, was, there wasn't the frustration where, you know, radiology isn't doing their job. They're not coming to pick up the patients and the lab's always late with their lab work. And so we can't make decisions and our patients are staying here too long, filling up a bed. And we got three people out waiting in the, in the waiting room. All of those frustrations started to go away as we were able to handle and process the patients through better. And the patient experience is better too, right? Faster throughput's what you want. When you go to the hospital, you don't want to be sitting around. Like people feel the waste. As a patient, you feel when you're just sitting and not being looked at, not be, uh, being taken care of. So if the hospital is taking very better care of you and moving you through the process more quickly, you're getting treatment more quickly. Your uh, patient experience is better. So, uh, you know, it's a win all the way around when you make those changes to make the process easier for you and for the patient. And not only that, but the other departments were happier with the emergency department as well, right? They are not beating up on each other as much. We're working more as a team and less as adversaries, you know, trying to get something done, but not communicating as well. So do you have any questions? I'm sure you do. If you do, please reach out to me. My email is sedro at leansixsigmatoolbox.com. You can always go to my website, leansixsigmatoolbox.com. Call us up. Uh, myself or one of my partners will be able to answer the phone and help you with any problems that you're having in your hospital, in your you know call center, restaurant, bank, you name it, mining company, manufacturing company. We've worked with people in pretty much every industry and help them do a couple of things. One, see their process in a new way. And number two, see the waste and variation in the process so that they can remove it and find an easier, better, more productive way to run their process and run their business. Look forward to hearing from you and we'll see you in the next module.